um, because actually horses have a sense of humor too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm learning a lot today. A sense of humor. Yes. Wow. Okay. Uh, how how do you detect that? Um, well, Let me give you an example of. Uh, sure. Do you say something? You say joke, and they like. No, so like it's, it's raise their legs or something. So it's how horses engage with their environment. Um, so. Like, I, I remember reading books about racehorses uh, that will drink, uh, you know, take a drink of water. And for people that wanted to get a photo op, they would stand by the horse's door and the horse would come over with that mouthful of water and spit it on the people. Oh. <laughs> and they just think that's, and they just stand by it and watch the reactions of the people and they think that's the funniest thing in the world. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I actually did experience that in person one time. So. Hmm. That's a good way to want to interact with horses versus just thinking you can feed them like random things, like you said. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like actually if you can interact with, with a horse and and do it playfully and, you know, the horse does what you just described, then you're actually having fun, mm -hmm. good fun with the horse versus yep. frivolous fun, right? Yep. Okay, got it. Um, okay, let's move away from the subject of fun <laughs> and talk about... <laughs> Uh, you know, taking the, the way healthcare is nowadays around uh, for horses and for animals uh, related, similar to horses, right? So, what does uh, horse healthcare look like in the present day, uh, and how, how 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 does that compare to to the past? Um, so, we've got a lot of advances in uh, medicine that we've done with horses. You know, similar to the the human world, um, and a lot of therapies that we use for humans will actually cross over and work for horses as well. I mean, there's mm -hmm. Horse chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, um, red light therapy, uh, um, electronic magnet pulse therapy. There's there's a lot of therapies out there for horses, um, and uh, you know which is nice because you know I think the it it leads to their longevity for sure. Um, I think the world's oldest horse in the Guinness Book of World Records is 50, 50 years old, and he was an Irish. Uh, draft so mm. 50 years old mm -hmm. okay wait so i'm thinking right now as you as you you're talking about the healthcare system being so broad and you're having different you know you have acupuncturists chiropractors and other people right let's go back to your the horse you talked about earlier on beauty mm -hmm. right the owner just neglected the horse basically yeah uh, yeah is it okay Shouldn't horses be considered like, uh, especially if you own them, like your children? I don't know, like your something you're responsible for. For or, sure, you know, animals you're responsible for, and if they're sick, and obviously sick, in, mm -hmm. like in, that, in the case of beauty, they should be treated. Otherwise, the owner needs to be the horse needs to be taken away, or some kind of something needs to be done. Is, is that is that the case, or yeah, I or mean, you can just let a horse be suffering and nothing gets done to you? No, there's actually. Um, uh, there's actually an organization called Hooved Animals uh, Humane Society, um, and I think they're based out of uh, Woodstock, Illinois, actually. Um, but the challenge with that is, you know, it's it's not an easy thing to find horses that are, you know, suffering or neglected like that sometimes mm. just because, you know, if a person has a lot of land, uh, the horses can be out there and, you know, it's the person sees them, but not other. It's, it's not open to the public being able to pass by and see them very easily. Yeah. So so it, it's um, easy to get overlooked when the horse is in a bad situation like that. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty sad. And there's no, like, regulatory body that will do, like, inspections. No. 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 So the, the best that we have is, you know, local authorities, you know, if, if somebody sees a horse being underfed and they're, you know, real bony and they look like they could use some food and they're standing there with no food in front of them, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you can have luck with calling the local sheriff department or something like that. And if, you know, the, it's it varies by a different area. Um, sometimes they give them a warning. Sometimes you know, it's extreme enough to where they'll step in and, and remove the animals from the, the property. Um, but again, it, it's it's not something that's managed um, on a national scale, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good to know. Uh, well, I, I just hope the system gets better. Uh, I mean, if, if you had a child and, and the child didn't show up to school, then... Mm -hmm then, you know, mm -hmm. the proper authorities will figure out what's happening and take the child away from you, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, we've talked about horses a little bit. We can get back into the subject of horses and horse healthcare in, in, uh, later on in the podcast. But right now, let's talk about your company. Let's okay. talk some business, all right? Okay. Uh, intuitive Horseware. Mm-hmm. What is it all about? Um, so basically what I'm looking to do is use technology to help give the horse a voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and by doing that, the idea is to be able to um, see how the horse is moving on a regular basis and create a baseline normal for what is normal for how that horse moves and um, give the rider insight, if you will, to that operating system of, you know, when the horse is starting to suffer from some type of pain, whether it's from, you know, landing cr- incorrectly uh, from a jump or if it's the tack is ill-fitting or something like that, um, rather than letting the horse just endure and, you know, and not being aware of there being a problem, uh, the idea is that the technology would alert the rider that something's going on and they need to check something out. Okay, so that's the overall premise of uh, intuitive horseware. Um, is there a particular type of pain you want to track, or do you want to just track every type of uh, condition the horse on the go, um, is going through? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing with horses is that the source of pain can be in multiple places all at once. So some, you know, because it's all connected. So, you know, they could have something going on with the hoof that winds up leading to a problem in the shoulder that leads to being something that's le- a problem in the uh, hips and then it shows up in the hock. So it could be like a multi-point um, areas where the horse is struggling to move or feel comfortable. Um, so really it's about uh, just making the riders aware um, as far as looking at the horse's conformation, their feet, and how the horse is moving without any tack, with tack, and then with the tack and rider to s- help discern if there's any changes between those things. And then that will kind of help the riders shortcut what the core issue is. Okay. Fantastic. Using technology to help give the horse a voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can imagine a lot of... Uh, I don't know, uh, entities, people soci- in society who are just stoic, who don't have a voice to. And uh, it just makes sense to me because if you don't, if if you're an animal or a human being, I guess, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm mixing both right now, mm-hmm. but any animal or human being who is very stoic will definitely need people to stand for them. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they're mm-hmm. just going to suffer in silence. Right. And that's, that's what I'm thinking about as I'm, as I'm hearing all of this. Um, and if you're not going to, you know, use your sense of humor as a horse to communicate your pain, mm-hmm. uh, then you might as well just use some type of technology. Right.